In Lesson 2, we're going to utilize some of the capabilities that, that we created from Lesson 1, specifically our database, our connection manager, and our data access component. In Lesson 2, we're going to create and populate a Windows Form grid view using C Sharp. We're going to add and configure a progress bar using C Sharp, and we're going to implement threading using the method invoker thread, uh, being aware of locks using C Sharp. In part one, we're going to create a new Windows form application. We're going to add a grid view with buttons to stop and start to the form. And we're going to configure and populate the grid view with data. To create a Windows form application, you'll click on File, New, Project. Windows form application, and we're going to name this Lesson 2. I want to change the name to be Lesson 2, and I want to change the text on the form to be Lesson 2. We're going to utilize some of the components that we created in Lesson 1, such as the Connection Manager class and the Company Data Access component. And we're going to do this by creating a new folder called Data Access. To that folder, we're going to add those two components. Let's add the connection manager, and then we'll add the tag. It's important that you remove the web references because this is a Windows form application, and we're going to change the namespace to be two. As well, we're going to add a reference to the system.configuration because in the connection manager class, we're using the connection manager to get the connection strings from the config file. So scroll down to system.configuration and click OK. And then it's added. Now we're going to add an application config file. And within that, we're going to add our connection string. We're going to name it Enterprise 4. And the connection string, if you remember the easiest way to get that, open your Server Explorer, right-click on your database, Properties, Control-A and Control-C. And then control V, copy it in there. On the form, I want to add two buttons, one to stop and one to start. I want to add a label. It's going to be used to tell if we were successful in our data grid view population. And I want to add a grid view. Let's add the code that is going to populate our grid view. Right click on the form and, click and view code. The first thing we want to do is include our SQL Server libraries. And we'll create our populate grid views function. It's going to be a private. It's not going to return anything. And there's going to be no parameters. Create our SQL statement. I'm 
using pass it to SQL statement and then using our connection manager class we created in lesson one get uh, get the connection and I create a SQL data adapter Data set fill our data adapter with our data set, calling it company, and get our data grid view. Set the data source equal to DS. and the data member. And then finally, we're going to just write to our text that says our data retrieved. In order to populate our grid view, when the form loads, we're going, to, we're going to double click on the form and it'll create this load function for us where we'll enter in populate grid views. And then we will run it. In part two, we're going to add a progress bar to a Windows form. We're going to configure the progress bar and we're going to create a reset progress bar method for later use. To add a progress bar to your Windows form application, go in your toolbox, common controls, progress bar, drag and drop. In the load event function, we're going to enter in progress bar one dot step equal one progress bar dot minimum equals zero and progress bar dot max equal sixty. So next I want to include using my threading classes and then I want to add a move progress bar method. It's going to be private. It's not going to return anything. Except no parameters. I'm going to have embedded four loops. So what this is going to do is it's going to perform one step every minute. It's going to do it 60 times, which is one hour, and then it's going to do that eight times.